Okay, section three, more on functions and their graphs. Okay, here's what you should be able to do. Identify intervals on which a function increases, decreases, or is constant. Use graphs to locate the relative max or min. Test for symmetry. Identify even or odd functions and recognize their symmetries. Understand and use piecewise functions. And find and simplify a function's difference quotient. That one we're not going to do today, the last one. But we should be able to do the rest of them. I'm going to save that one for next class, the, the uh, difference quotient. Because right? that's a little tricky. And uh, I'd rather spend some extra time on that one. Okay, a function is increasing on an open interval if f of x is less than x of x1 is less than f of x, x2. They're saying that the y value of the point on the left is less than the y value on the right. So that means it's going uphill. <clears throat> okay, so if you're going across the number line, the y values are getting greater as you go to the, to the right of the number line. A function is decreasing on an open interval, okay, when, okay, when you're going left to right on the number line, the, the, the y's are getting less, so it's going downhill. And constant, is, it's just a flat horizontal line. Nothing changes. All right? You got that? Sometimes you need horizontal lines. State the intervals on which the given function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. Okay? And they say it's increasing from negative infinity, which is out here, to negative, to negative 1. Right where I'm pointing at there. See, that stops right there, right? So it's going uphill right there. That's like on a roller coaster. Then you're right at the top of the hill. You know, you almost pause for a second. And then you go downhill. That's decreasing from negative 1 to 1. And then you're going back to increasing again. Now they have arrows so that it goes to infinity. Everybody understand infinity to the right and, and, and negative infinity to the left on the x-axis. So this is basically what you want to do. Notice that they're using parentheses for all of these. They're saying an open interval. So that's what they mean. It's, it's open circles. I mean, okay. If you get if you're not sure what which which one to use, while you're doing this assignment is is to uh, look at the examples, look at the end at the how they're putting them in. Okay, a definition of relative maximum and relative minimum. A function value is a relative max. That's going to be a, an upward bump. So you might have a graph that goes on to positive infinity or negative infinity or vice versa. But inside, around the origin, there's going to be like a positive bump and maybe even a negative bump. Well, the positive bump is going to be your, your up bump is going to be your relative max. And your, your downward, it would be more of a valley, right? It's more of a valley is going to be your relative min. That would be the, and that would be the, how you would find those. So you can see the red would be your relative max. And blue would be your relative end. The easy way to do this is on Desmos. If you push your finger right there, it will it will give you the ordered pair. So you could just graph this on a on Desmos, and you just touch the positive one and you touch the, the bottom of the valley, and it, it will give it, it will give you the coordinates. All right. Even odd functions. The definition of an even odd function is the function f is even function. If the y value, that f of negative x, means the y value of negative x is the same thing as the y value of the positive x. That's what that's saying right there. That means that if you fold it in half on the y-axis, they would match up the y values. 
the uh, also it means that is symmetric about the y-axis so that's the key thing so if you got this I would highlight this symmetric about the y-axis that's the vertical axis you can fold it in half if you can't fold it in half and it doesn't match up everything then it's not it's not even all right so for you got that so you can, if you could imagine the y folding on the y-axis they have to they have to match up if they don't it's not even an odd function if if you put in a, a negative x you should get the you put in an opposite x you should get the opposite y value of of the positive x or the of the original x so that's what that means this is symmetric about a origin symmetric with respect to the origin so you got to think is the origin it's like a the pin on a pinwheel and you turn it 180 degrees it should look the same okay it has to be through the origin the the, the spinner you know if it spins the pin has to be on the origin if you shift it to the right or shift it to the left or up or down it's okay it's no longer odd it's got to be about the origin and the same thing with the uh, even function the even function if you move it to the right or move it to the left it's got to be symmetric about the y not a vertical line but the y-axis and odd must be symmetric about the origin we'll, we'll do some of these on the examples are on my math lab and i'll show you those okay this is an algebraic way of doing it and it's probably pretty good to look at because this is the kind of stuff we're going to be doing in next class so determine whether the function h of x you don't always have to use f they're using h here equals x to the fifth plus one is even odd or neither so you have h of x equals x x to the fifth plus one now we're going to check if we put negative x in do we get the same function so h of negative x where, where x is we're putting negative x to the fifth plus one well negative times a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative five negatives is odd it's going to be negative so you have negative x to the fifth plus one is that the same thing as positive x to the fifth plus one no so they're not it's not even so what they did was they put in a negative x wherever x was and just simplified it okay let's try let's try again we put h of x in right and now we put in we h of x you get x x to the fifth plus one put in h to the negative x again the negative x wherever there was an x and there's only one so it's negative x to the fifth and it's an odd number so it's going to stay negative plus one well that's negative x to the fifth plus one now what they did is they factored out the negative so you factor out the negative you get negative x to the fifth right oh no excuse me okay they didn't factor out the negative okay so let's go back they did what they did here was they got negative x to the fifth plus one that's h of negative x now they're showing you if you put in it should give you the negative it should give you the negative of this y value and when you distribute the negative you get negative x to the fifth minus one and they're not the same okay this function is not odd now this is how you would have to do it without a graphing thing but what i would have you do is i would have you graph y equals x to the fifth plus one on desmos if you could see that the y-axis goes straight down the middle and you can fold it over and they'll match up then it's even if you see that it's going through the origin if you rotate it 180 degrees it would be the same then it's odd if it's not then you can't see what happens here x to the fifth is is an odd function 
but plus one, you're shifting it up one. So where this one, if it was just x to the fifth, it would be going through zero, zero, which would be your pivot point. But see, you're shifting it up one. And so it's no longer going to be spinning around the origin. It would be spinning around y equals one on the x on the y axis. So that's why it's neither. Okay, but I would I really for this class for level threes, I, I'm happy if you can graph it and look at it. Piecewise functions. Hopefully you did this in uh, algebra two. I know my kids did. And here's an example, and I imagine C stands for cost, all right, and T stands for time. I'm just guessing, all right. Given the function, okay, what is the cost if your time is between 0 and 60 minutes? This could be like for phones or something like that. And so it would be 20, all right? I don't know, 20, whatever. And then... If you go over your 60, all right, then it's going to be 20 plus 40 cents for every one that you go over. Now, you guys are, are too young for this, but I remember when my daughter, I think she was probably 6th grade, 7th grade, and I got her a cell phone, and they had these these packets and you know maybe you have 100 text messages you can have i mean it's, it was really small at first when they first started this and every time you went over it was like 40 cents for every text message they went over well you give these and and so many parents were having the same thing they were getting their phone bills and they were like 500 dollars or something because, you know, kids were just texting back and forth. And there was so much per text. You went over that thing. So this is a model of that. And uh, it, it got really... She did it one time only. It would cost me some, it cost me some money. But she never did it again. Uh, and what, <laughs> I probably paid the extra because you could have unlimited text. Because it was really... It was tricky. When this first came out... They were charging a lot. When you went over your, they, they give you so many texts a month. And if you went over that, they charge you. So this, see how this works? Now, if I put in 70 for T, 70 minus 60 is 10. And 10 times, okay, 10 times 40 is going to be what? $4. So it'd be $4 more, all right? See, they're putting in 80. 80 minus 60 is 20. 20 times 40 cents is $8. So you, you get $28. And this is this is where piecewise functions are used a lot in uh, economic and business like this. And, but you also, it could be a, a, on other behaviors too. When you have a graph that, you know, might go flat for a while and then it goes up and then maybe goes down, you could break it into three different pieces. That way you get a better model. Okay. You hear about when they're predicting weather and stuff and say, we have a model that does this, a model that does that, a model that does that. So they're always trying to make better math models. And they still don't have perfect ones because you can tell by predicting weather. Look at the, um, the virus. They were trying to predict the behavior of how many cases, right? And, and you can sometimes they, they behave certain ways in some ways. Sometimes it's better to break those data up into sets and then you can have a much higher, more precise model. But this is often used in business and utilities and something like that. Like they'll give you so many gallons of water, that, you know, that you can use every month. And then once you go over that, you got to pay more. Same thing with electricity. Electricity, so many kilowatts. And after you go over, there's it's a different price. All right. So this is it's, it's just it's just the way things are done. Um, the graph of one, you just break them up into parts, okay. Three, three is is just a horizontal line. So if I put anything, 
less than negative one or equal to it, you get three. All right. That'd be like the minimal payment. All right. Negative one, negative two, negative three, three. Okay. Now, once you get beyond, okay, if if it's greater than anything greater than negative one, right? So if it's greater than greater than negative one. You, so zero is greater than negative one, put in zero. It's always try to use zero if you can. So zero minus two is negative two. So we got zero, negative two. And then you can go one. So put one in. Always, you know, if you can use those numbers, if that works for you, use that. They're easy to do. So you put one in, one minus two is negative one. So those, those are points there. And it looks like this. All right. Here's negative one. So anything from negative one over, it's a constant line of three. Now, when it's greater than negative one, notice there's an open circle. This is just a this is just a straight line. This is y equals mx plus b. It's negative two, crosses at negative two, the slope is up one over one. Right, and it just it keeps going, but you notice something. This is a closed circle. That's an open circle because of the vertical line. You remember the vertical line test for a function. Now the vertical line will only go through one point, so that's important with piecewise functions. You know, if you have a closed circle here, you have an open circle down here. So that way, the vertical line will only go through once. I believe. Yeah, we're going to do this next class. So this is this is actually calculus here. Remember, this is a pre-calculus course. This is actually the beginning of the calculus here. So this is a, it's just a little tricky, and, and uh, we'll do that next class. So this is done for now. All right, can stop here. You can remember you can re rewind this, replay it. It's not perfect, but you know I don't know how to edit, so you got to got you got my gaffes in here, or whatever. But 